Thank you, Michael, and thank you, poets and players. Um, poem with this cow in it. Uh, there was a point in late June uh, when I, along with many other people, were probably a little bit bemused by a vote, and that made me think about the behaviour of herds. Poem with this cow in it. You know, as well as I do, this poor cow's a pretext, not the object of attention. Sad to lumber, unaware the uses you've been put to, she tests one foot patiently before another. The wobble of a zen balloon, a gas and shit dirigible. The other tide migrates from the parlour to the parlour, from the parlour, soft as polyps, timed by the trickle of a liquid clock. The cows produce themselves along the slurry path. In heaviness they go, that calls them to the artificial suckle of relief, blotchily, calmly, all together. If she looks like the leader, it's the flow behind her. She was at the back when the turn came. At this gate, she ponders ponderously, as our host, the foregone, empty envelope. We know who the loser is, announced in backwards order. The cows have voted with their feet and left their monuments around us. Uh, so this is a poem about a common phrase we use when uh, communication reaches its end. It's called Little F-U-C-K-O-F-F -F Song. <laughs> this one you know, you know by heart. First, the unsung note expelled with pressure, friction fizzed across the lips, the vicious fissure of a grimace which unbears and drops to slack. The jaw falls to the utter floor of unshaped sound, uncare, worn down, a shrug of schwa hung in its dripping cave, a zero of despair. Then comes the axe to hack with, the snap of fight turned fright, turned kick and spit, flung quick at hit to hit the softest bits and leave the mouth behind, alone and mooning softly, oh, ah, uh, oh, out of gas the blown off shell of this exploded and collapsing thing, returning you the hiss where it began, white noise showing no one gets too far and the cost of it when every signal has been lost. And finally a song about, a, a poem about a thrush. A um, couple of things about this poem to preface it. The first is that Originally, it came from listening to a debate on the radio between an evolutionary biologist and a musician. And the biologist was saying, well, of course, the thrush doesn't make its song because it's beautiful. It's all about uh, sex and territory. Um, and the second thing you should know is that thrush song is made of repeated units. So they will pick a phrase, they'll repeat it a few times, and then I'll move on to another phrase and use that a few times. And this is something that's been noted by poets in the past, and there are one or two nods to previous users of this trick in the poem. And the final thing you should know is that we have a larynx, a bird has a syrinx. The word syrinx is in the poem, and that's what a bird uses to produce its voice. What the thrush utters. For all the clockwork, clockwork world, our local thrush pip, pip, pips at six, utterly, utterly locked to his song from his bush above the radio, radio news. Chill it is, chill it is, chill it is when he starts on impressing the hens in November, November, how far he can throw his bubble, bubble of command over and over the garden. His loud and urban throat unloads a load of sexy, sexy, sexy syllables. Trip, repeat, trip, repeat, trip, repeat. 
See him pump up and bend, pump up and bend his gymnastic syrinx to pitch each riff, each riff with a flick of wings, automatic and his own. He's up at the top, at the top of the tree of winners, winners that ate that snail and got the girl and ate that snail and ate that snail. More fierce alto instruments hustle up and down and up and down the road. They torrent, torrent, torrent into dark as every wired up micromaster chants to make more space, more space they must expand the evening into. But my thrush levers up a gear, untraps another origami fold in voice, in voice his mate looks vexed about, about what he means and why he's saying it, saying it, how his rhythm cuts up, cuts up, cuts up, cuts up, and makes a grammar of the air. He's trying it, trying it for size as he hammers on with practice, 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 until he fits, fits inwardly the night, gloved soul, soul-feathered arbiter of phrase after phrase after phrase. He is coping with his OCD, his OCD imprinted stutter in the only way. Overboard and bold is fittest, is fittest. Pick it up, pick it up, pip, 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 the radio. Babble, bubble, babble. Chilling is the trip repeat, trip repeat, trip repeat up at the top the torrents, torrents, torrents to make space and untrap that voice. That voice trying it from practice, 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 practice. What he means is, what he means is saying it, saying it, saying it, utterly, utterly, utterance. The second prize goes to Ian McEwen for um, his poem, Poem with This Cow in It. This one caught my attention and held it from first reading. It begins with a playful title and a sleight of hand opening, but becomes surprisingly poignant. I was very struck by its linguistic inventiveness and wit. <laughs> 